the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask, send us the Holy Spirit, that the Spirit of Light, the Spirit of Knowledge, Spirit of Inspiration, we have this Holy Spirit with us, direct our words, direct our uh, expressions and our thoughts, that this interview would turn out all right, exactly as the those who initiated uh, planned to do it. And this we ask you, Heavenly Father, uh, to live and reign forever and ever in Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. This is um, Father Julius Lelotsky, and he's written an interesting book called That They May Have Life. And uh, tonight on our author to author show, uh, this is the, uh, the book that we will be discussing. Um, so uh, this is uh, an interesting title, um, That They May Have Life. Um, could you... Tell me uh, what it is that uh, led you to write the book. And, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. okay. I don't know where to start. I could start it. <laughs> My vocation by 60, 70 years ago. Mm -hmm. I don't want, want to go back that far. Mm -hmm. But I go back to 1980s. Mm -hmm. In nineteen eighty. Two, I think it was 1982. I don't know whether you remember the name Adrian Kahn, who was a famous author mm -hmm. in the 70s and 80s. I don't know what order was his religious order. He was a religious, and he wrote, I think he, he, he was a psychologist or uh, but a very, very accepted, very popular author in mm -hmm. those years. And he had a little book, The Woman at the Well. Mm -hmm. It was about the, uh, maybe a hundred, twenty pages book, just a long meditation about the story, the uh, Joanna's story of the Samaritan woman at the mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, somehow, as he uh, meditated on uh, this passage, uh, I became aware how important in St. John the word life is. Mm -hmm. St. John has several key words, key expressions like uh, uh, light and love. So there, there's a, a good uh, number of uh, words which are very rich, very rich. And he uses uh, quite frequently these words and uh, uh, using these words he wants to And pass a message. You know that they say that if somebody is studying biblical Greek, you mm -hmm. should start reading the Gospel of St. John because his uh, vocabulary is the smallest. Mm -hmm. Exactly because he has these key words and, uh, which always come up again and again. So mm -hmm. in this book that word was life. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I started to read in the uh, re-read uh, the Gospel of uh, St. John. And I saw that this uh, word life and eternal life mm -hmm. uh, come up. They have a very deep meaning. 
I may realize that when he uses the word eternal life, that is not life after death. It is the same what it means by life, the life of God. Mm -hmm. Jesus came to bring back to mankind. Mm -hmm. God gave that uh, life to Adam and Eve, which was the participation in the inner life of Holy Trinity. Mm -hmm. And uh, by disobedience, Adam and Eve lost that life. And it was a thousands, many thousands, maybe million years of uh, expectation until the time came, the fullness of time, that Jesus came to give back that mm -hmm. life to people. Mm -hmm. And it, is, it was because of his uh, death, suffering, death and resurrection that we could uh, get, uh, receive this life and live this life. So practically we have two lives in us, the mm -hmm. biological, physical life and a supernatural life, mm -hmm. uh, the life of the Holy Trinity. And that was uh, really, from that time on, pretty much a center in my meditations. That, uh, uh, you know, in older theological books, it was called the inhabitation of the Holy Spirit or the one, the one persons. Um, or, but the simplest word is sanctifying grace. Mm -hmm. Sanctifying grace is not just a, a, <laughs> a name, true word name, it means that life, the eternal life, the life of the Holy Trinity, in which every Christian by baptism and faith participates. Mm -hmm. So this is why uh, I chose the title, that I may have life. And uh, the life is really that divine life. And uh, it was taken from the 10th chapter of St. John, mm -hmm. that Jesus said that I came so that they may have life. Mm -hmm. So this was the reason of the title. Mm -hmm. Well, lucky. Anything more? You ask another question. So, um, you know, I uh, I'm always fascinated with um, with the supernatural life. It's like you know, when I take the Eucharist, I don't. I assume most people feel this way, but when I take the Eucharist, when I accept the Eucharist, I should yes. say, I can feel like I can breathe deeper. You know, it's like, and I mean, it's actually a physical reaction. Yes. It's like there's more life in me than there was five minutes ago. You know, That's it's amazing. Right. Yes. Yes, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Yes. And many people don't oh. realize that. And oh, excuse me, I just Unfortunately, many people do take the Holy Communion you know, so mechanically. Uh, <laughs> without thinking, really, they take it almost like it was only a wafer. And uh, that is the greatest reality. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm living in the community, and when we get together in the afternoon or evening, one of the fathers asked me that, what was the peak of your peak experience of your day? Mm -hmm. And I said, was only community. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Day, that is a big experience. Mm -hmm. so, it is. Yeah. And people take it for granted. That's right. That, that's, now, that was what I always inculcate with my students, not only about the Holy Eucharist, but about anything, particularly that 
kids could, should not take for granted their parents. Mm -hmm. uh, because that is a sin. Mm -hmm. I mean, to take uh, anything, uh, so anybody taking granted, the uh, for granted love, that is a uh, mm -hmm. sin. I mean, the love is the greatest thing what we can pass mm -hmm. on to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to appreciate that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so taking uh, for granted that is, is uh, is something uh, sinful. It is. I agree. It's. It also. It just makes me sad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Unfortunately, many, many kids do that. Many kids. Uh, So we have the educators like you uh, may have to repeat that again and again, not, mm -hmm. not to fall in that uh, error. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that was one uh, source of my, uh, the title of my book. Mm -hmm. the, um, the other was, I wrote a, a small book, I published a small book in Hungary, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, actually had the same title in Hungarian, mm -hmm. different book. It was a smaller book, but uh, even at that time, that was in 91, no, maybe 1995, in that year uh, that the book came out. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were also uh, meditations. Well, the meditations came out from a uh, Vatican radio series of meditations. So when I was, uh, almost two years, spent two years in, interrupted my teaching career to, for two years for, with another job in Rome. Mm -hmm. And I was asked by the Jesuit father who was heading the uh, Hungarian department of the Vatican Radio. <laughs> they have 46 departments. They, mm -hmm. they broadcast uh, programs uh, in 46 languages. So the uh, head of the Hungarian department asked me, to give a series of meditations uh, mm -hmm. uh, through the radio waves. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so the English book uh, is, uh, is a rethinking and expanding that early book of the 1990s. Mm -hmm. And of course, publishing in English. And I, I consider that more mature. It is a really an old priest looking back on his pastoral career. And uh, I thought that there are a number of uh, insights maybe original insights, uh, which uh, accumulated through the years. And I wanted to put them, collect them together, uh, almost like gems mm -hmm. in, in a little, a little volume. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, well, as I mentioned, uh, I mean, I, I told you, Father Sebastian, that uh, we had the book self-published uh, uh, almost two years ago. Mm -hmm. and, uh, 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 later, I, later on, somebody gave me the name of Father Sebastian, name of the publisher. And uh, my father was uh, good enough to 
take uh, the job of publishing my book officially mm -hmm. by a publisher. And, mm -hmm. and uh, that, uh, to do that, I hope maybe it will be available through Amazon.com. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, I small questions. Mm -hmm. Well, I just I I have to make the comment that the word gems really uh, says how precious this is to you. You know, it's it's. It is. It is. Little insights. Little insights. But mm -hmm. uh, through the years, I discovered, and I never seen it but never heard it by anybody else so mm -hmm. uh, uh, so I I put them in the different meditations of the world but uh, still the idea of eternal life mm -hmm. is uh, going through the all the meditations mm -hmm. that basic idea the basic thought of uh, uh, John's gospel was really a, a, a driving motor in me to meditate and uh, to express uh, these meditations, mm -hmm. put, put them into writing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, um, so how many... Um how many different types of insights do you have in this? Um, as a the number of meditation is 35. Mm -hmm. uh, after the introduction, uh, after this is the self published book, mm -hmm. and uh, I gave the title Love Story to the introduction in, mm -hmm. uh, of the uh, book mm -hmm. because I consider spiritual life a love story. Every person has this love story, which is maybe even more important than the falling in love with a human being. Yes. Your love with God is is much more important. Of course, yes. I consider the human love stories as uh, uh, coming from the big love story. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, just like uh, for for St. Paul, for example, marriage, uh, love between man and woman, mm -hmm. reminds him of the love uh, between Jesus and the church. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, the man uh, leaves his parents and unites himself with his love, uh, St. Paul says, I understand that uh, with uh, uh, the church and uh, and the uh, God, in church and Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the second chapter is actually uh, the entitled life, and and that is a whole chapter about explaining what I mean by this divine life. Mm -hmm. The different aspects of it that it includes, for example, the, uh, of being God's children. And, uh, well, it's so connected with the call of God to be holy. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly, I mean, to live out completely that eternal life is mm -hmm. one place. And um, uh, several places, St. Paul, the Gospel, the, the Sermon on the Mount, uh, 
the, Saint Peter's uh, letter also, Saint Peter said that, "Be holy, for I am holy." <laughs> First, I understand that and you uh, human beings cannot become holy by themselves. It is all grace, and that and that grace is that eternal life. Mm -hmm. So holiness is really the full development of the divine life um, in a human being. Mm -hmm. So this must be why, when you think of it in those terms, this must be why God gave us the sacrament of reconciliation. So if we make a bad mistake somewhere along the line, That's there right. is a way of getting back into, into the good graces. That's why... Uh, The meditation is so kind of uh, not in very logical order, but after the chapter of life, mm -hmm. I, I love the first few words of the letter to the Ephesians. I have a meditation on that. Mm -hmm. and after that, I start with the church the uh, Christian year, the liturgical year starting with Advent, Christmas, Lent, uh, Easter, mm -hmm. Ascension, uh, and then going on to Pentecost and Holy Trinity, Holy Eucharist. Uh, so, pretty much the year chronologically, but uh, then it, it is into the, that a uh, chronological order interrupted in Lent with some uh, uh, questions of spiritual life. For example, I have a pretty long meditation on, on uh, uh, judgment, uh, do not judge. Mm -hmm. And I consider that very important. I believe that the human tongue is a very dangerous weapon. Mm. And uh, by his tongue, a human being can almost like to kill. I mean, I, I, sometimes a wrong word stay in a person's heart for life. Can no. I cannot forget it. Yeah. So I, ha I have a, a longer meditation on on this, on the on this on the importance of not to judge. Mm -hmm. then, then it, it goes on to other topics. I I have a chapter on on uh, you know, what I call the passion. Which I really mean enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, passion has two meanings: passion of Christ, mm -hmm. uh, the passion, and like, I like the word passion. But passion can be good and bad. So mm -hmm. in itself, mm -hmm. the word passion is neutral. What it depends what you do uh, and whether your passion takes you in good direction or bad direction. Mm -hmm. uh, so I consider this good passion or enthusiasm uh, the most important human resource in a person. It is, it, it is the most valuable in any team. Mm -hmm. The most important is that every member of a team would be an enthusiastic person. Whatever they do, a scientific research uh, or, or um, a group retreat or, or uh, hiking in the mountains or but the, good, the quality of the group really mm -hmm. depends that Every person would be enthusiastic, filled with a good passion. 
And uh, for this, uh, so there is one of the meditations. And uh, the last, uh, the last chapter is about death. <laughs> and death in a very positive way. And that uh, for me, uh, uh, for a good person's death is not a tragedy. It is a, a beautiful passage from this world into the next. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was one of the gems I, I like that. For me, Mm -hmm. I took the uh, image of uh, uh, in injection, uh, inju injection or vaccination, mm -hmm. smallpox vaccination. Mm -hmm. a, uh, and uh, this is how I understand Christian death, that uh, the smallpox vaccination is actually giving you a portion of smallpox mm -hmm. in a in a small for a, three days. You you will have you are sick with mm -hmm. smallpox with a light version of smallpox, mm -hmm. but because of that you will become immune to uh, smallpox. Mm -hmm. So that's what I understand with uh, Christian death. It is a, it is like a, a smallpox uh, a shot by which we uh, are immune against any, anything evil and immune against uh, eternal death. And uh, we just pass on to eternal life. Mm -hmm. And uh, should I talk me about my uh, life? Should I talk about my uh, past decades? Mm -hmm. I'm I'm right now ninety one years old. Oh, wow! <laughs> you know, I would never have dreamed that. <laughs> yes, uh, I was born in 1932 in, uh, in Hungary, mm -hmm. and uh, wonderful parents. And before World War II, I was still small, but I could enjoy the peace before World War II. Mm -hmm. My brother was 10 years younger than I. He was not so lucky because he was born in the middle of the war. Wow. So his, his life was just bombings and running and so, uh, fleeing, but uh, and then communism. So he had a difficult going up. I, I still enjoyed a few years of peace mm -hmm. with very, very good parents. My sister was born not long after uh, I was born, so we were pretty much growing up. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, yeah, when I was born, started, I was about 10 years old. And uh, when the war really started in Hungary, mm -hmm. and, uh, my parents were, uh, good Christians, particularly my mother, she gave us a good Christian education. Mm -hmm. And I went to a Benedictine boarding school. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was the time when I, I, I was imbued mm -hmm. by monast my monastery life, monastery mm -hmm. life. I didn't notice at that time. And I, at that time, I didn't want to be a monk, mm -hmm. but I love the place. Mm -hmm. and, uh, those four years, I was there four years, uh, 
uh, stay with me, and I, I love those years. And uh, so I, I was, that was food for me for mm -hmm. later years. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was in a public school for high school, mm -hmm. why? That's the interesting reason why. Because my family had a French pastry shop. Mm -hmm. uh, we had two stores. One was for my my father, the other for my uncle, my dad's brother, and uh, it was a, a good business until in 1949 the communists took it away. Mm -hmm. So a really change. I'm, I'm sure that if there is no communism in Hungary, I would have become a baker. <laughs> uh, because that was this is natural. I, I never thought anything else. I I have to continue the family business. Mm -hmm. My grandfather started the business in 1885, and I just have to continue. Mm -hmm. Of course, 1949, the communists took it away. They nationalized every store, every mm -hmm. store, particularly whoever had had even one employee, even one having one employee who was a capitalist, exploiting the employee. And mm -hmm. that's communism. Anyway, because we didn't have the story, right after my high school graduation in, in 1950, I went through a second conversion. I met a group of very good young men, and uh, it was the the movement was start, started by, by a, a priest, a pirist priest, right in the summer of 1950, when all the religious orders were suppressed. So. Mm -hmm. There were no religious, except one monastery was kept for political reason. I wanted to have one monastery to take Western dignitaries and uh, journalists there to see how free religion is in Hungary. And that was mm -hmm. that one place. Anyway, and uh, so we were start. About uh, that priest, the Paris priest started an a organization of teaching children religion because communism uh, eradicated all relig religious instruction in the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, they started to teach religion in secret. And uh, I learned that so much that it was, uh, I became more and more hungry for reading about, uh, reading about uh, Christianity, good, good authors. Uh, it was very close friendships, good friendships. And my, to, to, uh, also I, I felt the hunger for the Eucharist. I started to go to the church every day. And uh, but in two years later, the first idea came that well, I love to teach religion. How about doing that all the time? Doing that full time. So that was the first idea that I might be a priest. Mm -hmm. and, uh, then I was, was, I was in college at that time in Budapest, but I had a Cistercian priest in my hometown, and uh, we corresponded. And that was really the time when I got my monastic vocation. Mm -hmm. It was really almost like a, well, like a bolt, <laughs> a lightning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lightning in the way that there was a church. Um, the communists allowed the seminary in Budapest, 
And uh, I like to go to that church. It was called the University Church. I went every Sunday there. And uh, one day, that was Christ the King feast. So the feast of Christ the King. As I was listening to the beautiful Gregorian chant, it was really like a cloud came over me. And uh, it was a kind of a awakening or a, something, realizing something that this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. This is my place. This is what I don't know want to be. And uh, but of course, the religious order was suppressed, and that another priest led me to the Cistercians. I learned that Cistercians, after the suppression, continued to exist underground, and I got together with the leadership of Cistercians, and and really they had a good number of. Uh, seminarians underground, mm -hmm. so which means that uh, young men openly they were uh, university students or working in a factory or working in offices, and but in secret they were assistants. And so I joined them. I became a novice in 1954. I took my first vow, vows in 1955, and then in 1956, the Hungarian Revolution came. It was a, was a spontaneous outburst of anger. And uh, it was a great surprise for Moscow that a little Hungarian nation I revolted, and uh, for two weeks there was freedom, freedom, and well, of course, the Soviets did, couldn't allow uh, that such a revolt would win. So, with new hundreds of tanks um, came to the, in the country, and uh, they defeated the revolution. But the world, Western borders were open because before that there was the Iron Curtain. It was impossible to leave the country. But the revolution opened the uh, borders and our superior, the social superior, said that those who are living in the world, uh, the young monks, should go west um, to the Western world to study, and uh, so I, I also went. Uh, for, at that time, there were 200 Cistercians in Hungary, <laughs> and uh, uh, 14 uh, Cistercians left um, at the end of the revolution, after the defeat of the revolution, the six priests and eight the seminarians. The eight seminarians were all sent to Rome, and that was, you can imagine the culture shock to be an underground novice in a communist country and come to the uh, center of the church and freedom and we could wear mm -hmm. certain habits and all that. So that was a great culture shock. And to make long story short, I spent eight years in Rome with studying. And in 1964, I got, uh, well, the, the Cistercian uh, priests left Hungary uh, in groups, in small groups, uh, right after World War II. And in 1955, yes, 1955, they, they gathered, they were in a small place, a small monastery. It was not a possible to open a school or that. Anyway, the sisters started to gather in Dallas. 
and uh, I built the monastery with the help of the bishop uh, in 1958 and uh, I came in 1964. So when I came, uh, we were all, uh, there, there were already, there were 34 Cistercian priests in the monastery, all Hungarian. Imagine. At that time, all 34 were Hungarian. Today, we are 25 in the monastery, and I'm the only Hungarian who survived. Ah. And, uh, but uh, then, after one year, parish work to learn English, I started to teach in, the, in our prep school. We have a, the prep school was started in 1962. So it's now it's already sixty years old, and it's a very very good school, and I enjoyed teaching there for twenty years. I was also librarian, and uh, so um, it was not little problems. There were conflict with the older priests who, who came out. We didn't know communism uh, really because I came right after World War II before real communism started. Uh, so they didn't understand that. But eventually, so uh, the monastery uh, they didn't grow very well. I mean, in, First, uh, one of the Cistercian priest's brother who left the Hungary also in, in 1956, he entered, he was the first novice, then two young men from San Francisco entered, and then two novices, yeah, one of them was our student from the our prep school. But, we didn't have any vocations. By 2000, uh, only six new vocations joined, and all people were dying. And then something happened. It's a it's a funny story. I mean, a miraculous story. Mm -hmm. Had a wonder, a really holy novice master in Hungary who died pretty young. And our abbot at that time was a Hungarian priest, and then it's Falkas Fogi. He, he prayed to this novice master, Lawrence, Father Lawrence. Father Lawrence prayed for the monastery. And he was very specific. He said, please send us five good vocations in 10 years. Lo and behold, Father Lawrence sent us 10 good vocations in five years. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is how really the flourishing started. Now, almost every year we have one or two vocations, mm -hmm. and we are 25. And uh, so I'm retired. Of course, I'm retired. And uh, I, I have my I have had a very bad COVID in 2020, uh -huh. and it uh, left some permanent damage on my lung. Since then, mm -hmm. I have to have the oxygen. I walk with a walker, but otherwise, I'm doing fine. Mm -hmm. So this is my life, and. Uh, I was mostly teaching religion, sometimes other things, history. Like one year I was teaching even Hungarian language. Uh, now, we have five, five young priests uh, who came from our own school, and uh, the others come. We are really on the campus of University of Dallas, 
Uşağı hmm. Katolik University. Hmm. And a good number of vocations came from there. Mm -hmm. There is a very good Catholic life in the so-called Texas A&M University. Mm -hmm. Seems a few vocations from them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, God sent us some vocation. So, mm -hmm. this is pretty much my story. I think you've had a fascinating life. Well, I'm very grateful to God. So I'm, I'm, I'm full of gratitude. And yeah. I have a brother living in Hungary. We, speak, we meet by Skyping every week. Oh, nice. Uh, I've, uh, so I don't know what else I uh, could tell you. Mm -hmm. I told about the book I wrote. Mm -hmm. I told about myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know how I will feel about death when I get sick. Presently, I feel I am ready to go whenever God wants. I'm uh, also longing after eternal life and uh, every morning at Holy Communion I feel that I'm already heaven. So I really feel that Holy Communion is a few minutes of heaven. And, Now, uh, well, the 2011 was an important uh, year in my life. Mm -hmm. That's when I stopped teaching in our school. Uh, yeah. And uh, from that time on, I was pretty much in the pastoral service, pastoral ministry. Mm -hmm. And uh, in 2011, I was priest for 50 years. So that's my 50th anniversary of all the nation. Mm -hmm. uh, I stopped teaching and I got a, a tumor on my, on my kidney, kidney cancer. I lost one kidney and uh, I was doing pastoral service a pastoral ministry until COVID. Mm -hmm. And when I went through the pretty bad situation in the COVID, after that I was completely retired. But mm -hmm. I was hearing confessions. Even now I have still uh, hearing confessions of a student. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I was retired, and uh, so through my retirement years, I wrote my biography. Mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. some, so for some people, it will be interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if Father Sebastian in, is interested in it, mm -hmm. I could uh, send him, and uh, if he likes it, I will edit it and uh, make ready for uh, publication. But uh, this is my life. Mm -hmm. I, I emptied my heart to you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. I think you've had a beautiful life. Uh, you, when you smile, your whole face lights up. You have an inner happiness that very few people have. Well, inner peace, I believe. 
I confess I, I'm happy. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's that's very apparent. Yes. You have a wonderful smile, and you've had a wonderful life. Nobody, nobody told me that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I mean, really, you've done you've done what God wanted you to do, and yes. that's so. What better uh, life could a person a have? Difficult at uh, times because. Mm -hmm. When I was in Rome studying back in the late 50s, mm -hmm. uh, the fathers in one of us, one of the eight seminarians, got persecution complex, so he became mentally ill. Oh. And uh, actually, he uh, couldn't continue to be oh. Finally, communists allowed his mo mother to come and she took him home. Oh, that's sad. But because of that, our fathers who didn't know communism, mm -hmm. thought that in communism, everybody became crazy. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they decided that all of us have to take a psychological test. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, a Hungarian priest psychiatrist came to Rome from Switzerland mm -hmm. and tested all of us with the usual lying on a couch and uh, some mm -hmm. typical psychological test. Mm -hmm. And when the evaluation came, he said that I cannot have a real, a real religious uh, celibate profession, uh, um, uh, vocation. Mm -hmm. And that was tough. That was tough. So I, I really had to uh, uh, struggle two years until ordination. Mm -hmm. And so now sometimes I consider that the uh, uh, the night of the, uh, the black night of the soul. Yeah. And uh, particularly to the professional psychiatrists who say, I, I cannot have a vocation. Why am I here? I mm -hmm. should, uh, I should leave. So, but I say then, uh, my good confessor and uh, by the grace of God, uh, I stayed. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy that I stayed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, can I say anything else? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have any more questions? Um, well, I, I don't really. I just, uh, I'm really in awe of the life you've had. I mean, think about it. <laughs> you had a tremendous life. It's and you've always stayed true to God. It was a life at that point. Yeah. I consider also that I owe much to my parents. Mm -hmm. I got a, a lots of love from them, so I was mm -hmm. raised in love. Mm -hmm. I had two siblings. Mm -hmm. I, my sister was very close to me mm -hmm. in age and in uh, and in, in love, in, in uh, brother, sist sisterly brotherly love. Mm -hmm. she, unfortunately, she died a few years ago in Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. It was very sad to see how she declined. Mm -hmm. But we have good memories. And mm -hmm. I have a brother who is 10 years younger, he lives in Hungary, and we keep in touch. Mm -hmm. brother, well, uh, you're lucky. You had a loving family. Uh, yeah, uh, not, not everyone does. Yes. It mm -hmm. was not easy because uh, after World War II, when 
half of the country was in ruins. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a very much great shortage of homes. And because of that, two families lived in the same home. Mm -hmm. And uh, my uncle and my aunt lived there. They were a childless couple. Mm -hmm. And they, there was an old lady who uh, my grandfather adopted. Mm -hmm. And she never got married, she never married, mm -hmm. and we were five mm -hmm. uh, parents and, and three children. Mm -hmm. Well, the apartment had four rooms, and we have only one of them. Mm -hmm. so it was that was called our room, our mm -hmm. room, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh. Well, that was a, we didn't sleep all in the same room, mm -hmm. we slept in two rooms. Mm -hmm. So, but even in this situation, the, my father died when I was uh, 20. Yes, come in. Hey, Father. Okay. I was uh, wanting to help you open a file. Hmm? I need to open a file for you. Uh, maybe tomorrow morning. Oh, sure. Eight o'clock. Eight fifteen. I'm never on time Saturday morning, but yeah. That's okay. I will be here. Okay. <laughs> this is with uh, this was Father Philip. Mm -hmm. uh, is the infirmarian. Uh, mm -hmm. I have also. Uh, how do I call it? Uh, I have lymphedema, which mm -hmm. means uh, my ankles are swelling. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, well, if Philip has to put on special socks on my... Oh, sure, yeah, the compression socks. Yeah. Yeah. I have to wear those. I had, uh, I had blood clots. Oh, I had... Uh, I had cancer, and one of the side effects of cancer, before you know that you have it, you get blood clots. So I had a blood clot in my left leg that oh. uh, almost went to the knee, mm -hmm. but the one in the right leg went from the bottom of my foot up past my knee in two, two different vessels. So I have to wear those all the time. Otherwise, oh. my legs go boof. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I have to take off for night. Mm -hmm. uh, during the day, I have to wear it all the time. Yeah, yeah, I do the same. Yeah, they're they're really a blessing. And I yeah. also sleep up here, mm -hmm. and uh, I need oxygen. There are three machines around my bed. Mm -hmm. One produces the oxygen. Yeah, and a long tube brings my mm -hmm. my nose. Mm -hmm. um, when I leave the room, I have. We take canisters of oxygen. Sure. The other tape is the other uh, machine is filling up your canisters with oxygen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the third machine is for night. That is a special CPAP machine. Sure. It mixes air and extra oxygen. Mm -hmm. So I have these three machines, and sometimes I feel I'm. Frankenstein. I don't. <laughs> you know, it, they're a blessing. I, uh, my husband, I, I married twice because my first husband died in mm -hmm. uh, 2006 and, uh, of cancer. And uh, I remarried with, there were four of us, that, the four, two couples that were very friendly. Uh -huh. We ended up uh, marrying um, yeah. Bill's first wife died of cancer also. And uh, my second husband, who was a, an extraordinary man, but he was similar in his medical condition to you. He had um, an oxygen concentrator. He had a portable one that he just carried because he had to have it all the time. And he had uh, oxygen tanks. Yeah. And it was a burden for him 
because I think it's worse for men because men are used to being strong and to have to take something. Yeah, yeah it's harder for them than for women. Humor, of course, in the last eight years, mm -hmm. ever told me not to drive anymore. So yeah, I cannot drive anywhere by myself. I need a chauffeur, mm -hmm. and uh, now we have to sit in the front passenger seat. Mm -hmm. we have to take the canister of oxygen. Mm -hmm. It works out pretty good because yeah. I have the walker. Mm -hmm. Canister is in the pocket of the walker. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. But uh, so I cannot complain. Uh, my abbot is extraordinary. He's mm -hmm. uh, he's a servant leader. Mm -hmm. He works a lot and helps everybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, the community is very good. Yes, yeah. see the. Well, you're very, you're very lucky, but yeah. I mean, also we're all lucky to live at this time when the medical, the, yeah. I mean, I would have been dead years ago with those blood clots. And yeah. My husband would have been dead years before he died because of, you know, the problems he had. So it's, it's so good when you, you know, even though the medical equipment is really a pain, mm -hmm. but the thing is yeah. it keeps us alive and it keeps us, it, yeah. it's good. I thank God for, for the medicine that we have now and the medical equipment. I, you know, in our school, we have a strange system, strange here, but it's very um, uh, normal. That's a normal uh, system in Europe, in Hungary also, that mm -hmm. uh, in high school, and we also have eight-year school, so like, like mm -hmm. our school. It mm -hmm. starts in fifth grade, goes mm -hmm. to twelfth grade, and uh, so that we call it preparatory school. Uh, like, a priest gets a group of ten-year-old boys, mm -hmm. and he stays with them eight years, mm -hmm. and uh, they grow, grow up mm -hmm. under his hand. Uh, yeah. And, uh, I have two, two such classes. Mm -hmm. And I, of course, through eight years, become very, cold, very close. Mm -hmm. And uh, but uh, the boys themselves, because uh, the school is small, uh, the whole uh, only boys school, mm -hmm. the whole stu number of students is 350. Mm -hmm. And every class is about 40 to 45 mm -hmm. in two sections, so 22 mm -hmm. boys in each classroom. But uh, I had two classes like that. I graduated in 86, mm -hmm. that on 2000. Mm -hmm. uh, Philip was in my class. Mm -hmm. Actually, his brother was in my class for a few years before I went to back to Rome. Mm -hmm. So I, I know this priest since he was five years old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, our abbot, Abbot Peter, <coughs> he, he was our student. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> I know the abbot from the age of 10. Oh, that's wonderful. And I saw him grow up mm -hmm. as a wonderful young man. Yeah. He went to college, I think in Maine, Bowdoin College. Mm -hmm. And when he was in junior year, it was then that he, he decided to become a Cistercian. Mm -hmm. And he interrupted his college came to Dallas and with another uh, same age young man, Father Gregory, there were two together novices. Mm -hmm. They graduated a year through Dallas and both of them graduated and had uh, <coughs> uh, graduate school in uh, English, so they 
have a master degree in English. Mm -hmm. I would Peter who got a second uh, master degree in classical languages. So mm -hmm. he likes to teach also Latin. And so mm -hmm. God is good. Yes, he is. Yes. I'm very lucky. I'm very for Europe. Yeah. I'm very for Hungary. I'm very mm -hmm. for the war in Ukraine. And it is a crazy. Oh, it, so oh think, it's a heartbreak. Terrible yeah. heartbreak. All these Western readers are crazy about sending, killing, killing machines and weapons and, and everything. Mm -hmm. All of them are for killing people. I don't know how many tens of thousands of soldiers died in in both sides. Yeah. The, from the, nothing. Uh, there is no end. The yeah. Don't see an end. They don't want to stop. Well, Satan is powerful. Yeah. And you know he gets into the minds of the leaders or the rulers. If there's any way he can get in there and cause havoc, he does. And there usually seems to be a reason, a way to get in there and cause havoc. Yeah. You see, right. Hungary is a good Christian government. Mm -hmm. And you know, by democratic election, mm -hmm. the, the same party government was elected four times a year ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, and come Hungary, the Hungary government is for peace. They don't send weapons. They don't mm -hmm. even allow that mm -hmm. weapon shipment would go through the country. Mm -hmm. For this reason, like, Hungary is ostracized by other European countries. Mm -hmm. And they say that in Europe, now there are only two countries which want peace, Hungary and the Vatican. Yeah, mm -hmm. I believe it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... Mm -hmm. We will have a big <laughs> visitor someday. The Minister of Justice will visit our Abbey, mm -hmm. the Hungarian Minister of Justice. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, some people, a delegation with somebody here. There she's a lady. And, uh, it will be a big event. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm also, I still am. The, there is a Hungarian club mm -hmm. with a good membership. And uh, I've I'm kind of a chaptain of that group. I, I mean, more than chaptain. Mm -hmm. They have a very good Hungarian lady as president of the club. Mm -hmm. and we discuss everything, what should happen. So I, I have her. And uh, we have, we, you remember Cardinal Minsanti? Mm -hmm. uh, he was a cardinal after World War II. He was a hero mm -hmm. leading Hungary against communism. And in 1948, he was arrested. And first he was con convicted to death. And then that changed mercifully for life sentence and he was liberated by the revolution in 1956. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to leave the country so he fled to the American embassy and he lived in the American embassy for 15 years. Good for him. Yeah and then at the request of the Pope he left Hungary because the Pope wanted to appoint another uh, leader of the Hungarian church. Mm -hmm. And 
So Miss Auntie was, I think, in left seventy one, probably seventy one, nineteen seventy one. He died in nineteen seventy five. Mm. He traveled all the time, visiting Hungarians, mm. all continents. Mm -hmm. And one time he was staying at our monastery for five days. Oh, nice. And he was the one who introduced that we have to have a Hungarian mass every month. Mm -hmm. We have that for 50 years. That's life. That's yeah. really nice. And uh, so. It's too bad you don't live stream it. I would, I would love to attend a Hungarian mass. <laughs> You know, but there's, a, there's none around here. No, not around here. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. So I think we have to finish because mm -hmm. I expect a uh, father to uh -huh. visit me. I have some computer problems. Uh huh. And he's okay. an expert. <laughs> mm -hmm. and okay. Um. Would you close us with prayer, Father? Yes. Lord Jesus Christ, who are the way, the truth, and the life, thank you for being among us, coming together um, in the cyber world, but you said that two or three come together, you are there in the midst of them. So we know that you were present here, uh, loved us, and make, made communication possible. Now bless us, bless Cynthia, bless myself, bless my community, bless our families. and give peace to the world. Through the same Christ our Lord, Amen. Mm -hmm. By the Son of Holy Spirit, Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, Father. I really enjoyed this interview. And, well, thank uh, you. I'm yeah. happy to get acquainted with you. I am too. Yeah. <laughs>